Good morning, Bridge Church. For those who don't know me, my name is Simon, still, from the last time I spoke to you. What a wonder... Oh, morning. <laughs> yes. And that's Sean. Um, I've just... I mean, I've had an amazing day yesterday. Great news. I am full of joy. I will stumble over my words. But God knows what's going on in my heart. I am just rejoicing. And I hope that's how you've come today, with the joy of the Lord is your strength. You know, laughter is great medicine. <laughs> okay? And, and I want to declare that today. Joy over all of us. Not just me. I'm in a great place. And, you know, and so are you, because God loves you, and he is so, so good. And I was just thinking, how on earth do I lead into the time of worship this morning? And there really is only one place to start in my, in my thinking, and that is with Psalm 100. Known as the Jubilati, which is joy and jubilation. So... Let's stand and I'm going to speak these words. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. He is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people. That's why we're gathered here to worship him. We're his people the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. We're here to praise him, give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. He is a good God and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen. Let's praise him. Let's praise our God. Praise God, 
of God on Calvary. I just had this, the verse from Romans in my head. And I believe one or two people need to hear this, 1620, which is the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Isn't that amazing? We focus on the crushing, but it's actually the God of peace who's going to do that crushing. That same God who hung on a cross and died for us at Calvary. That's who you're worshipping this morning. So as we continue to worship, know that as you lift up your praise, the God of peace is hearing that and will crush whatever is in front of you.
Great are you, Lord. Oh, wow, it's just awesome to pour out our praise to him, the one, the audience of one, our one focus. Wow. Please do sit down. Thank you. So I'm acutely aware that... uh, This is only the second week of our uh, services in two places, so I hope I do everything right, and the problem is the boss is here. Um, (laughs) So, well, absolutely, that is so true. (laughs) But, you know, 
the one who's sort of the boss with skin on. Um, <laughs> so, so just to, uh, again, welcome you all here. If you're here for the first time, we're really, really pleased to see you. It's a joy to have you here. And uh, if you want to connect into the life of the church, then these blue forms that are on the seat, connect uh, forms, please fill in one of those because it'll get you connected to us, to Church Suite, which we use to pass on a lot of information to people. If you have any problems with the forms, just come and speak to one of us from the front and we'll help you with that. You probably noticed we don't pass buckets round for giving, but we do believe in giving, in you know, giving back to God and his work, not just in this church, not just in this city, not just in this nation, but in the world. And we have some giving envelopes. If that's something you want to do, please give, you know, please fill one of those in. You know, please, uh, again, there's an information station at the back. I still have problems with those words. That's uh, Julian who's to blame for that. Um, and uh, fill those in and, and uh, we will yeah, process those things for you. And it is a joy to give, believe you me, it is a joy to give. You will never outgive God, ever. So uh, a couple of notices for this week only. One is, I think it's Saturday next Saturday, is the ladies' pamper evening. Is Sarah, is Sarah here? Who's, she can stand up, look. We're going to... That's Sarah. If you need to know anything about the ladies' pamper evening, please talk to Sarah. She will point you in the right direction. All you guys who are very envious about there not being a men's pamper evening... It's up to you. If you utter those words, you organise it. Okay? <laughs> uh, so, and the, the next thing is the really joyful return of Encounter to the building down at Bridge South. And uh, that's on Thursday at 7 o'clock. 7.30. Sorry, I have to be there for 7. Yeah. <laughs> 7.30. Thank you, Sean. I told you I'd get things wrong today. I'm so excited. Um, I just want to say, if you've never been to Encounter, a bit like, I'm going to use a joke I've used before, a bit bl like blindfold archery, you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> Think about it. Okay? So it is a great time. It's a second sort of gathering, a time where we can sort of meet God in a slightly more uh, contemplative, I suppose, environment, but with worship and prophetic words. It's a great time. And, you know, come and be blessed with that. So, Dave, I'm going to hand over to you to introduce our guest speaker. But just before you do, I do want to mention that the guest speaker has been blessed by going to the same school I went to. <laughs> so, thank you. Wonderful. Could someone just grab the lectern for me, please? Uh, one, of the, one of the tweaks that we've been uh, making in talking about kind of how we do our services and gatherings is a bit ironic that we've just literally made this tweak. But uh, one of the things we kind of say is people that are leading the meeting don't really need to get up and introduce the speaker because the speaker can kind of introduce themselves. Uh, but the exception of that is when we have a guest. And it's really important for me just to come and uh, introduce our guest for us this morning. Uh, we don't believe in just having kind of random people to come in and speak to the life of our church. We always believe that people that come in, there's a relational connection or there's a reason that we've invited them. And so it's really important for me on behalf of the team to explain that many of you might not know who's coming to speak. So we want to give you some context as to why David uh, is with us this morning. Uh, we've been part of the same denomination for... Well, goodness knows how long. I've been, in, I've been in Assemblies of God my whole life. I don't know about your background, but I've known of David Hind and Susan for, for many, many years. Uh, they were part of a church in Nottingham for a long time and now doing a great work in Leicester, which David will explain about. But I've only really got to know David personally over the last four or five years. We had the privilege of working together with a group of other ministers on a... Um, racism and injustice paper that as a domination we put together a bit of a theological reflection based on some of the stuff that was going on in the world at that time and so that's where I really got to know David more personally and as I found out a little bit about his journey uh, we realized that they're doing something in Leicester 
that is uh, a bit similar to what we're trying to do in Lincoln, having a number of different services or sites within the same city. And so a number of us went down to spend the day with David. He was very gracious to invite us to spend a day in a church. And just as we taught, I felt even more of a sense of connection, a heart connection to what's going on there. And so whenever we do these guest Sundays, we've got Julian and Libby, who are speaking at, uh, down on Newark Road this morning. We always want people to come in who we feel, for one reason or another, have something to add to our journey. And so even though many of you might not know David, he comes highly recommended. And uh, I encourage you now to open your ears and your hearts to what the Spirit of God wants to say through this man. And so let's welcome David as he comes to speak to us this morning. Thank you so much. Morning. Morning. It's great to be here. What an honor to be here. And hello to Dave and Sean. Sean? Sean. Sean. <laughs> Sean. <laughs> she responds to anything I've heard. <laughs> so it's just brilliant to be here. Uh, and what an honor to see you all looking so amazing this morning. Give me a smile. Thank you. A few months ago, our neighbors moved and we went around to meet the new neighbors. And we knocked on the door and the lady opened the door. And she looked at Susan, my wife, and she said, ah, she said, you must be vicar one. And she looked at me and said, you must be vicar two. And I was a bit taken back, but we realized the previous neighbors had, had talked to them a little bit about us. And so we invited them for dinner, and they came around a few weeks later. And uh, as, they were, uh, as we sat down to dinner, the lady said, this, my daughter asked me today, what are you doing tonight? And I said, we're going for dinner with the people next door. And she said, you mean the vicars? And I said to her, yes, but they're different than you think because they're not at all godly. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't quite sure how to take that. Uh, I hope she meant religious, but it made us laugh. My wife Susan is a Geordie by birth. She loves the sea. She could beat anyone in this room at rowing. And if you stand still long enough, she can knit or crochet you anything <laughs> at all. She finished an enormous blanket last night. It's like another thing. We have a little dive done this. Well done. Then move on to the next thing. And she's currently doing about 700 beanie hats for everyone in our life, whether they want one or not. And her mum is 91. And part of their relationship is that each day Susan sends her a text, a thought for the day. Uh, and uh, some time ago, she... Uh, said to her, I think, Mom, today you should read Matthew 22, 37, which is about loving God with all your heart and soul. But later she got a message, and uh, Margaret's text um, language is incredibly um, misspelled, but it's fun. She says, Susan, I'm a bit puzzled by the text for today. And when we dug a little deeper, we realized that she'd read 27 instead of uh, 37. And that 27 says this, last of all, the woman died. So, I mean, I thought it was a word of encouragement. As for me, I am a lifelong Derby County supporter, Yay! familiar with suffering. Uh, Susan and I have been married for 30... That's alien, so people want to leave now. Uh, Susan and I have been married for 37 years. We're blessed with an amazing family, two sons and daughters-in-law, three wonderful grandchildren. They stay with us every Monday night, and I'm continually reminded of the reality of joy by Annabelle, who's 11, Rosie, who's 9, and Zoe, who's 8. Constant games... Cooking, hide and seek, dressing up, dancing, stories. Tuesday, we're always exhausted when they take, after we take them to, to school. But around the table recently, uh, we did a Bible verse learning, and we were looking at the verse, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And it was changed by Zoe, our youngest, to Jesus said, I am the garlic bread of life. I'll never, ever be able to read that verse and not think of garlic again. And you know, life gets complicated, and we get distracted. And for me, my granddaughters remind me that life is actually wonderful, and we need to seize the moment and be grateful and find joy in every situation. You know, if you're married... Uh, and you're able to, it's time to hold hands when you're next out together. And, uh, and if you can, skip together. I don't know when the last time was you, you had a little skip, a little skip there on the live stream. Hello. And um, it's good to skip. You can't skip and not laugh. Build relationships with people who make you smile. Yeah. Find the river of joy in the middle of every season. Because sometimes it gets very serious. Well, I already love, love Bridge Church. Looking at your website this week. I love the fact that you're compassionate and missional. There's justice in the house and caring and discipling and community. All of the factors that should be at the very heart 
of every church. And thank you individually to you for the part that you play here. Thank you for everything that you pour your heart into. Uh, Church is never about a platform. It's never about the leaders. It's about everybody standing equal in God's sight, doing their part to see the kingdom of God come. And and today I want to bring one verse to you. I want to encourage you to think about it. I'm going to challenge you, give you some things to, to take away and process if you want to. But I just believe it's God's heart for me to talk to you about having an upgrade as a church, about having another level as a church. We're in Acts chapter 9, verse 31. It's on the screens here. Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened. Living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. And I I sense this is the heart of the Father for you as a house in this next season. An upgrade, an upgrade of peace. Then the church enjoyed a time of peace. Where it comes in Acts, it's been a dramatic time. Steam has just been murdered. The church is facing persecution. The believers have been scattered. And Paul, Saul has just been dramatically converted. And then we read a time of peace. And, and today, there's a personal invitation to know more peace in our lives. To encounter him more closely. To press in. The king wants to pour out his peace on you today. I believe it's the father's heart for you to know a deeper peace in your life. I love this. Uh, Paul writing in Philippians, do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus to live in a new peace with God I was talking to a man the other day who he and his uh, fiance have been waiting to get married and he is um came here uh on a, on a visa that, that um, came to an end and they've been trying to get a, a right to remain so that they can get married. And it has taken so long and it has been so difficult for them. But they've kept their lives together, right, choosing to live apart until it came to that moment. It's been so difficult. And this week he received uh, that uh, affirmation with a, 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 the ability to stay, to remain, and they can get married. And I spoke to him yesterday, so overwhelmed that God, in the midst of all the traumas, kept the peace of God, you know, in his heart. To live in a new peace with God, that grace, that kindness, that forgiveness. And I know there are concerns in life about loved ones, about uh, anxieties to do with our health at times, and provision, and, and disappointment when it takes longer than we thought and our careers and the relationships that sometimes we go through with individuals those sandpaper people in church who sit next to you and just grate you a little bit just tell the person next to you you're not grating me at all and if you've lied then repent now yeah but i want to say the prince of peace is in the room today the prince of peace is in the room and he wants to do something in you there's an upgrade of peace for you if you'll stop and invite him As I entered 2021, I knew the Father was inviting me to come higher and experience more peace. I'd faced a real disappointment in my life and I I was stuck. I could not get over it. I kept reliving it and reliving it. I couldn't get over it. And and Susan, my wife, prays with a lot of people in division, so I asked her to pray with me. It was around lunchtime, and we just sat in our lounge, and she prayed with me. And I had probably the clearest vision I've ever had in my life. And I saw a river flowing, beautiful water. And there was at the side a bush and then a small wall, and behind the the bush was a small door. And contaminated water was trickling through and impacting the river. And I knew this water in a moment was not because of me or my sin or something in my family line, it, it, it was, sorry, something in my family line. And, and in the vision, I, I went to the door and I couldn't shut it. And it was so powerful. And I sensed Jesus begin to dig the soil out of the bottom of the door and oil the hinges. And there was this sound came of powerful water coming from downstream. And it crashed not only on the river, but through this door and joined the river. And then I saw a big boot and it kicked the door shut. 
And then I saw a key held out to me. And in this, this vision, I just took the key and locked the door. Looked at the river, turned back, and the door was gone. And I knew it had never returned. And I, something happened in me in that moment. It was so powerful. And I can tell you that beyond doubt, 40 months later, something changed in me in that moment. Because Jesus met me. And the, the Prince of Peace is in this room yeah. to meet with you yeah. right now. You can invite the Prince of Peace right now into every area of your life. But I believe it's also the Father's heart for you as a house to sense and experience an upgrade of peace. Look at this, uh, John writing in the Gospel. He says, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the, the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I've said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Don't be afraid. This is to be a house of peace. Bridge Church is to be a house of peace. Standing against strife and drivenness, restlessness. You know, God against all those things. And there are some really difficult statistics and situations. Loneliness, suicide rates. And we all know people who are anxious and afraid and restless, overwhelmed. And some things continue to get worse in the world. And just perhaps they'll continue to get worse. But Jesus brings his peace. Yeah. And every time you meet in every context as a house, and if you're watching this on the catch-up, uh, and you've been at the, the other part, the other service this morning, every time you meet, expect the Prince of Peace yeah. to impact lives. May everyone who connects with all the different ministries of Bridge Church Find peace and experience peace and know peace. This will be a safe place for many people. It already is. And pray every time for people who are anxious to know peace. My prayer is this from Thessalonians. May the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. Secondly, the Father wants you to know an upgrade of strength. Then the church was strengthened. The Acts Church was strengthened. Community was strengthened. Leadership became stronger. The Gentiles were about to be reached. Miracles continued. It was a time of strengthening in the house. The Father wants to bring new strength to you. I've been thinking, how do we build resilience and long-term strength in our lives? How do we build a life in Jesus that will last? How do we live in such a way that we'll finish strong? which is more important to me than anything else. When I had a revelation of Jesus being baptized and the Father turning up and realizing before he was famous, before the miracles, before he was known, the Father turned up and said, this is my son, which defined him, whom I love. He was loved because of who he was, not what he did. I'm well pleased with him. The Father was already pleased with him before he did anything. My, uh, my definition as a leader is never about my church, how well everything's going, how well I'm preaching, I am affirmed before I do anything by the one who loves me more than anybody else. It's the, it's the most powerful revelation. The Father heart of God is the most powerful revelation to change your life. I believe this is to be a strengthening time for you. Yeah, we need courses. I love just looking at the different things available, courses and learning and information and books. And, and you have uh, someone with a great teaching gift leading the house and bringing some depth and, uh, and helping you be grounded it's all so important but I want to bring you something else alongside that we've just had a sabbatical for two months and I went away with one aim not to write a book or come back with 10 new songs or but simply a question how can I watch with him more deeply more often and more closely in the this my life as it is I see we're, we're loved if we read or uh, we do or don't read or pray or intercede for others. We're still loved. But if we live without those things, we're so much poorer. I, I believe our devotional life individually is more important than sleep. It's more important than breakfast, morning exercise, planning, because it defines so many things in your life. And, and I love it that there's never any condemnation. There's never any condemnation as to how you lived yesterday. But also no excuse for tomorrow. You see, we can never do effectively what we want to do without Jesus at the very center 
of our lives. And we need a deep devotional life. And, and he wants us all to live close to his presence. Your devotional walk with him is vital if you want to get stronger in your life. To get out of bed just a little bit earlier. To find a space, a chair, somewhere you sit, a place where you walk, where it's just you and him. To take time to stop before you ask anything and just listen and worship. And I, and I can promise you this, um, you're going to struggle in life without this. And if you're in any form of leadership, you're going to struggle to fulfill anything he wants you to do without this at the center of your life. But I think he's calling us to even more than that. To be strengthened by walking with him. Continue. I love this verse. It says, he will drink, Psalm 110, from a brook along the way. The father loves to hear my voice in the morning. But I can invite him into every moment of my life. Yeah. Susan and I have been thinking about how can we live our lives with God in every moment. It's hard. Because you get, you move on, you you pray and then you, you, you solve it yourself. You, you, you run yourself. How can I listen to his voice all the time? Because when I'm close to Jesus, I'm, I'm a better leader, a better husband. I'm better in every area of my life. I'm nicer. How can I listen to his voice to breathe and to leave restlessness and just allow the sense of his presence to be in me? To stop and realize, to drink from a brook along the way. And it's not easy. You get distracted, but there's an invitation to regularly stop and listen. There's not one career represented in this room that isn't enhanced when you stop and you go, Jesus, will you come into this classroom? Will you come into this factory? Will you come into this shopping I'm doing with my kids today? Will you, will you help me? Will you draw close? Uh, regularly, we went to uh, Scotland for five weeks into the Hebrides and and it, regularly every day, I would take a little walk wrapped up in a blanket because it was so cold. <laughs> it's so cold in Scotland. And sit on a little bench uh, that became for me a really holy place. And I would look. We were on a, in a cottage on the beach. It was such a privilege. And I would look across and see Susan on her bench in front of the cottage. And I would just say, Jesus, I can't do this without you. And honestly, I pray I never recover from what he did in me there. See, he invites us in our lives every moment. And if, you're, if you'll stop and just say, I want to be stronger by having you closer to me, he'll come. But I sense there's also an upgrade of strength in three areas for you as a house. An upgrade in community. This is already a house of community. Stronger in community. Um, connect groups are going to become more important. They're going to become more important. You're going to need some more as the house grows. You'll need more. Places that have got empty chairs for people the Lord wants to send. Uh, you know, serving, family, meals, bridges with others, loving one another. There's more. Even stronger, I feel, in humility. This is already a humble house. But I'm thinking about Jesus, the Son of God there at the beginning of creation with the Father and the Holy Spirit. And then laying it and coming and humbling himself and kneeling down to serve the people that he'd made. And removing his outer clothes, tying a servant's apron around him, uh, serving by washing feet, walking humbly. I love that. Humble yourself. That's a, a verse so challenging for me as a leader. Humble yourself under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up. I feel even stronger in humility and even stronger in courage. There are some steps of faith to come for you as a house that are going to test you. To believe that God just perhaps could. In, in 2020, um, our church had grown and was thriving. We were multi-site. And... Uh, our main building was not big enough and we needed another building. And we tried everything to buy a building, lease a building, beg a building, command a building, steal a building. Everything we could and we could never find a building. And we would hire the basketball arena in Leicester to gather together once or twice a year. It was expensive. It was uh, echoey. It was, it was fun but challenging. 
And we felt we got to the end of where we were. At that time, we were running a thriving compassion center in the center of Leicester, and we needed a new building. And so we said, Lord, we realize we're not going to get another building. We'll keep planting. We'll just be grateful for what we have. This is enough. And we're going to take the resources we've saved, and we're going to put them into renovating a new compassion warehouse we had been allowed to, to lease by the council. And we did that all the way through COVID. It was changed. And uh, as we came out of COVID, ready to serve the city, and that's what it continues to do. And I'm so uh, thrilled with that work. But at the same time, something happened. It was almost like the Lord said, I love that you've done that. Can I just show you a, another thought? And there was another church in the city, a thriving church known throughout the world. Uh, blessed people had gone through difficulties and a split and a challenge. And in a conversation, we said, how can we serve you? And Susan went in and led that church for, for nine months uh, with, the, with the intent of getting them strong and getting, letting them grow and, and be sent out again. But our, our hearts connected. And at the end of that period, we felt that we should become one. We both laid down our names, became a new church. And they brought with them incredible buildings worth millions of pounds. And even now... Because we had grace uh, last year to do a two million pound renovation in that building, in just one of the buildings. And even now, every day I go on that amazing campus. I'm just reminded that we gave it away and the Lord gave it back. And, and I, I look, even this year, if I can say to you in humility, as we've strengthened again, you know, I've seen hundreds of people respond to appeals. Hundreds of people added to what we are as a house. Our reserves have significantly strengthened. Tithes and offerings increased. We've planted again into Loughborough. We're getting ready to start another building um, project in another one of the buildings on the plot. This is our testimony. An upgrade of courage. And I, I just felt preparing that the Father wants to bring an upgrade of courage for you because you're going to have some moments like that ahead and it I want to tell you it's going to stretch you it's going to need everyone involved it's going to cost but that's fun <laughs> and it'll always be worth it and if you'll be strong and resilient as a house if you'll live for not the fame of people but the well done of the father and if you'll keep the missional heart and the fact that everyone's welcome through your front door, and if you'll serve the poor and love the nations and be a house of many, many different people, all valued equally, the Lord will give you an upgrade of courage. I think also, thirdly, an upgrade of holiness and awe in him. They were living, back to our verse, in the fear of the Lord. It's true of the early church. be true of you. When our kids were small, my sons are 35 and 34 now. I cannot believe it. How have I got a 35-year-old son? What happened? But on one occasion, I remember we were going for tea with the lovely lady next door who was unique, who kept a lot of hamsters. And I spent a lot of time saying to my youngest son, my youngest son is uh, ASD, and uh, he's absolutely brilliant. He's, succeed, he's exceeded every limitation on him on the spectrum but he has his uniqueness and I love him to bits he was seven at the time and would say everything he was thinking regardless of what it fitted and I said to him I want to put a holy fear in you that when we go next door you don't go in and say this ass stinks of uh, hamsters I said please I beg you I'll pay you I will give you anything don't say that and I did it again and again a sense of the fear of God on him and he agreed, and we went next door for a cream tea with this lady with the hamsters. And we knocked on the door, and she opened the door, and Samuel walked straight past her, said, hello, stood in her entrance and went, it smells lovely here. It's like a nightmare. There's a, there's a call, there's a call for us to live to a higher standard in his presence. You know, we see Jesus this morning. I love the, the songs this morning. I love the song. Jesus, always honest, always generous, coming to serve, full of grace and truth, compassionate and kind. And when we encounter him, that same pull comes in us to live a life of integrity and tell the truth and to forgive those who've hurt us and to walk in humility and teachability and, and to give of our resources to him and to serve others as Jesus did, to love those in need with our agenda, to love God with all our heart. And to remember that one day he's going to return. It will be more wonderful than any of us have imagined. 
and we'll meet him in the air if we're still alive. I'm going to fly. I can't wait. I'm going. I don't care what you teach, Dave. I'm going to fly. I'm going up. I'm going up. Don't tell me it means anything other than flying. I don't want to know. And his grace for us is to walk in that heart of grace and holiness and carry compassion for others. Some years ago, a young Latvian family arrived at Help at our, a compassion charity, Open Hands, and then they came along to church and all the channel. I knew there were difficulties brewing, that they were about to be made homeless and got little kids and, oh, and we'd exhausted every possibility and nothing was working. And they said, this is where it is. David, we're going to leave it with you. Yeah, thanks. And I'm driving home and Susan's in the front. We had one granddaughter in the back at that time. It's day off tomorrow. And I'm about to pass a place where they, they live at the moment. And I'm thinking, oh, come on, David. You do lots of things for people. Just ignore it. Just ignore it. And the words of Jesus slip in the car. <laughs> oh, I'm not listening. I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. Ah, I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger. You invited me and I needed clothes. And you clothed me. I was ill and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. When did we see you? And the king said, Whatever you did for one of the least of these, you did for me. Oh. So I park the car and I find myself in a cold, damp squat, unfit to live in. And inside of this young couple with a lovely little girl and a baby sitting, mum's weeping and dad's silent, unmarried, the children with different fathers, countless bad decisions, unpaid rent, reckless presumption, and Jesus in the room. And a few days later, we were privileged to move them out and help them with their rent for some time in new accommodation, help them with furniture, help them begin to stand on their own two feet. Now, I sense this is the kind of house I'm in. Be a house of holiness. And out of that, be full of grace and compassion. May you never forget the kindness of God that has saved you from a lost eternity. His heart for us his heart for you is to be a people out working their faith where you live, genuine and real. A house speaking with respect and honor and kindness to everyone. A house bold in your teaching, standing for truth, and a house in holiness. Fourthly, an upgrade of his presence. They were encouraged by the Holy Spirit. I sense the Father wants to bring more of his presence to you as a house. Shortly after this promise, Peter is speaking to a group of Gentiles. And he says this, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished. I love this. That the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on Gentiles. That's me. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. There is more of him for you as a house. There is a louder shout there is a deeper silence. There is a greater encounter for you as a house. And let your prayer be, even today, even as you sit there, come Lord Jesus. Come Lord Jesus, breathe on us. We want more of you. Sarah Edwards was the wife of Jonathan Edwards, who was a revivalist in the early 1700s. And after an encounter with God, she, she writes of what happened to her. She says, I was melted and overcome by the sweetness of the love of God. I fell into a great flow of tears and I could not stop weeping aloud under the delightful sense of the immediate presence and love of God. The presence of God was so near and so real that I seemed scarcely conscious of anything else. I was entirely swallowed up in God and aware of Christ's nearness to me and my dearness to him. And she says, so far as I'm capable of making a comparison, I think that what I felt each minute during this time was worth more than all the outward comfort and pleasure which I'd enjoyed in my whole life put together. It was pure delight which fed and satisfied my soul. There is more of his presence for you as a house. Expect him to come. I believe he's calling you to an upgrade of peace, individually and corporately, an upgrade of strength, an upgrade of holiness, an upgrade of his presence. And it says that in the middle of that amazing verse, 
It says it increased in numbers. He's calling you to an upgrade of the numbers of people you impact as a house. Now, numbers are important, but they're never the final goal. I'm part of a conference this week that's called the 500 Plus Conference for AOG. And Susan and I will go to that. I hope nobody asks me how big my church is because it really is not that important. What's important is that we're faithful to what he's called us to do. And that's enough. That's enough. Never ever look and think size is what's important. Faithfulness to the call is what's important. But numbers are also important because they're people. And in the next 12 months, my prayer is that you as a house will see more people saved than you expect. More people saved. More people saved. You might need um, an evangelist to come in and reap the harvest a little bit. We did something earlier in the year with J. John and, um, and, and Mark Ritchie over a weekend. I think we saw 175 people respond to the gospel. It helped us. We'd been doing a lot of work. They came in and gathered a harvest. But it involves you sharing your faith with somebody. Because the best way is always when we invite friends. My prayer is that you have more people saved, more people baptized, more people baptized. Could you dare to pray that every month you'll have to baptize in the house? Because people are getting saved and need to be baptized. Could you dare to believe that in both sites on one day you baptize in both places because there's so many people yeah. getting saved. And what about people being added? Listen, experienced soldiers. We used to pray that they would come. They'd pack their bags from wherever they were in the world and come and join us. And we're seeing that from all over the world. We had our Nations Day two weeks ago. Uh, there were 70 nationalities in our church. I was so blessed. I mean, there's this picture I just love it, of representatives from all those countries on the stage, all together as one, praying for our mission partners. It's just blessed me so much. The Lord wants to add numbers in the giving side of the house. You're going to need some more resources. How exciting. In our vision offering, which we do once a year, we do this one phrase. We've got it in three weeks' time. And I'm telling, you, I'm telling you some of this, none of this is to say, look at us. It's to inspire you. In our vision offerings over the last two years, we've seen £900,000 given into those vision offerings that has helped us do so much of what we've done in the last two years. But all we've ever said is this. Sit with the Holy Spirit. Ask him what you should do and what the faith stretches for you and have the courage to be obedient. That's it. I feel that you, the increase of giving to sustain all that's going to be one or two new staff people to help you sustain growing and thriving. It increased in numbers. I believe that'll be part of you. Let's put the, this final thing on. Look, this is, this is what I believe the Lord wants to say to you this morning. Then Bridge Church. You can probably find a version with that in if you look hard enough. But <laughs> Then Bridge Church enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit. It's increased in numbers. I, I believe this is the word of the Lord for you as a house. And I want to encourage you to not just say, oh, that was, that was nice or that was all right or God, he's a Derby fan, I can't believe it. But honestly, if you can, if it resonates with you, pray it into existence. Yeah. Let's pray together. I'd just love to take a few minutes just to apply that to us this morning. Bridge Church enjoyed a time of peace. The Prince of Peace is in the room. The Prince of Peace is in the room. I've been doing this breathing thing, which has helped me so much. Breathing in and out. And when I breathe in, I say, I am yours. And when I breathe out, I said, and you are mine. Just breathing in his life, allowing anxiety to go and peace to flood in. There's one or two people in the room you've struggled with finding peace, that restlessness inside, that 
almost that drive. I believe if you stop and invite the Prince of Peace to come, he's going to meet you in your house at home, in that place where you sit a lot. Breathe him in, a time of peace. And he was strengthened, strengthened. The Lord wants to strengthen you as a house. Probably in the next couple of years, that's going to mean a couple of new elders, a couple of uh, new trustees who the Lord will send, who either will rise up in the house or he'll send them to help you be stronger. That's what we've experienced. Be expectant, Dave, be expectant. But strengthen. The Lord wants to strengthen you. Strengthen you. Strengthen you in compassion. Strengthen you in humility strengthen you in community it's been a little while since you've had somebody around for dinner or met for coffee and you can do that in an appropriate way then come on let no one stand alone strengthen strengthen this house Lord strengthen this house strengthen this house I pray encourage their hearts as they're taking this brilliant step to have another service in another place oh I love that vision <laughs> it's not about one place the best gifts it's about the body functioning Lord bless them strengthen them living in the fear of the Lord listen no condemnation but just put a few things right with him even now the fear of the Lord give, ask the Lord to give you a compassionate heart a deeper love for others if we could all stand in the room please encouraged by the Holy Spirit just breathe him in right now just welcome his presence if it helps you to close your eyes and put your hands in front of you they can sometimes stop distractions that's all just do that just allow his presence to flood into you Holy Spirit come Holy Spirit come Holy Spirit come encouraged by the Holy Spirit encouraged by the Holy Spirit breathe in his presence he's increased in numbers Father I prophesy to the north the south the east the west of Lincoln for people to come get saved and join and become part of the army going forward but I also pray Lord in the villages around may there be a representative from every village that surrounds Lincoln here in Bridge Church so that eventually connect groups can be literally all over not just in the city but much wider reaching people and Father I pray that the gifts that are needed, people would pack their bags from the four corners of the earth and come and join this house in the name of Jesus. I speak faith into the hearts of the leadership here for an increase in numbers. New souls, new soldiers, new giving, new blessing in the name of Jesus. Now, I'm going to pray a prayer. And I don't know anyone in this room so you might be walking really closely with Jesus. You might not know him. You might have just lost your way a bit. We're all going to pray a prayer together. And if you're watching this on the, uh, by video later on, pray this prayer out loud if you need to. But we're going to say the words together. So I wonder if you'd say these words. It's going to give you an opportunity to get right with him today. Say this. Thank you, God, that you love me. Thank you that you sent Jesus to die for me. The cross was for me. Today I come to you and say sorry for my sin, for the wrong things in my life. I ask you to forgive me. Jesus, I invite you to come into my life. I give you me. Come and change me by the power of your spirit 
Now, just while every head is bowed, if you've prayed that prayer for the first time or if you've prayed that as a recommitment, I want to encourage you to do something which is an indication both to God and just for me at the moment as I look round, just to say, I've prayed that prayer. Oh, oh, I'm serious. So if you've prayed that prayer for the first time or perhaps as a recommitment, just lift a hand and say, that's me. I'm not going to get you to do anything else. Yeah, brilliant. Anyone else who's prayed that prayer for the first time, thank you. Other people, if you've prayed it for the first time or as a recommitment right now. Father, I pray for those responding that they might know the presence of God in a deep way, affirming them in their faith. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We just stop. You're in this room. We love you. Just begin to thank the Lord. Begin to speak out your love of him right now. Begin to thank him. Come on. Open your mouth. Begin to praise him right now. The king is in the room. The Prince of Peace is here. We love you, Lord. How great you are.
of your presence. to really pray about to chew over with God let us never forget as we go from this place we're actually carriers of your presence your presence never leaves us we are carriers of your presence I just want to say to those who raised their hands I've no idea who they were um if you'd like to pray with someone at the end of the service, then Steve and Miriam, Charlie and Christine will be at the back and uh, be really, really happy to pray with you. It's been an awesome morning, absolutely amazing. And obviously the time now is we can go and, uh, and have some fellowship together and chat away and just share the great news and testimonies and things that we've had this week. You know, what God's done in our lives this week, we can share that over a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. Uh, if you do want prayer, anyone else, please again, go to the back and, and the team will be very, really, really happy to pray with you. But I don't think we can leave without speaking that word over us again. Then Bridge Church enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened, living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit. It increased in numbers. Amen. Go in peace.